Well, hello. It's Pam, and today I thought I'd create a video for tips on tapping and how to use tapping and go a little bit more deeper into the process because most of my videos are just where we're taking off that that external layer and for some people they do go a little bit deeper if they understand it and they know it more. So in this video I'm going to give you tips to to get the best from your tapping and your havening as well. We start with before we're starting to do the tapping we need to light up the issue or the challenge in our nervous system. So we're wanting to get in touch with all the ways we know that it bothers us. But that being said, if you're already in, if you already have an intense emotion, so it's already at a 10, quite often we use a sud scale, zero to 10, um, zero meaning and it doesn't bother you at all and 10 means it's it's really intense. So if you're already at a 10, you just start tapping. That's it. You just start working with it. But if you're only around a four and a five, but you know that it bothers you more than that, there's times where you get triggered and, and it goes up to the 10, you're looking to get a little bit more in touch with it and, and to start to work with it there. So that's the first thing. We're lighting the challenge or the issue up, issue up in our nervous system. Then we do the tapping. And when we're doing the tapping, we're focusing on the fingers. We're, we're taking ourselves away from how we know. And we're just letting it go. And we're letting it go, releasing and letting go, releasing and letting go. The next important part is we grab the wrist, we take a nice deep breath in, so breathing down into the belly. And the reason we breathe into the belly, when our belly has a full, when it's full of air, it triggers our fight, flight and freeze that we're safe. Because if we were running from a tiger, we would not have a belly full of air. So it's just helping us to to bring us back into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest. Okay, so full belly. Now, for some people, if the emotion or the challenge that they're working on is quite intense, you may need to use something other than just the breathing. And I'll quite often say on videos, do jumping jacks or listening listen to your favorite music. I know when I'm tapping on my own, I have ear pods in and I have my favorite song, it's Queen, We Will Rock You. I have so much emotion packed into that song from an event I had as well. And just by playing it, I'm there and I'm into the song and it breaks my state. And then I just stop the music and go back to tapping again. Okay. So we're breaking our state. So we're, we're getting in touch with our challenge. Then we're breaking our state. Then we go back and we notice the changes, but we notice what's left. We notice how we know it still bothers us. And this can be many things. It can be emotions. It can be physical sensations. It can just be an image. You may not even have emotions or physical sensations, but you still see it in your mind. And it, that is the issue because you still have that reference. It can be audio. There can be words that have been said or um, something that, um, that you've heard that bothers you. Okay. And there can be smells and tastes as well. And to a lesser extent, but they are there. And they're memories. All of these are memories. So our feelings, our emotions, and our physical sensations, the images, the sounds, the smells, and the tastes are all memories. They all remind us that this happened. I believe there's a knowing as well. Sometimes you might have cleared up a lot of memories and a lot of traumas, but you still know that it happened. And that knowing... I believe is tappable because I use it myself. I know it's there and I know it happened. And you can tap it down and say, oh, I'm not too sure now. <laughs> okay. 
So the first thing is we get in touch. The second thing is we're breaking our state. We're looking at all the ways it bothers us. Now, if the event, you have a really large reaction to it, please take care of your own well-being. And if you feel that it's something you don't want to do on your own, please reach out for, to a professional to help you through that. And then you can come come back and use the videos to, to clean up anything that may be left. But take care of your own well-being. And it's important. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. And you're in charge of looking after you. So please make sure that you, you seek that expert help when you need it. Sometimes when people are tapping or when I'm tapping with people, we come up we come up against this issue where they don't want to let it go. And that can be for a whole heap of different reasons depending on, but one of the favourite reasons is they don't want to let the person off the hook. That is tappable. So if you don't want to let someone off the hook, you tap on that. I don't want to let this go. They'll get away scot-free. They'll get away with it. They'll be let off the hook. All of that's tap tappable. Okay? So make sure that that's not playing out in the background. Because if you're, I'm letting it go, I'm letting it go, I'm letting it go, but then there's a part of you that's like, I'm not letting this go. No way. <laughs> we address the part, that aspect of self that doesn't really want to let it go. That also can be for people that have chronic illness and they can't heal. There can be a part of them, and it's just a part of them, an aspect of self that doesn't want to heal for whatever reason. They don't want to heal because um, people will think that there was nothing wrong with them in the first way, place. And these are all underlying, and this is where experts help to get them underlying beliefs that are going on. So it could be that no one will believe I was sick in the first place. I might have to get back out into life, so they might have to um, go back to work. They might have to um, start looking after the family. It could be many different things. And for whatever reason, that has become overwhelming. So the sickness um, or the illness or whatever it is they're struggling with, it can be chronic pain, it can be so many different things, has a benefit. There's an underlying benefit to it. And that is blocking the healing. All of that's tappable as well. Um, other beliefs that can be holding you back is um, you don't believe that you can get over it. You don't believe that, that it's possible to let it go. So just check what is your beliefs around the issue, around the challenge, whatever it is, and make sure there's not belief. Because you can be tapping on all the memories, but if your belief tells you that you're never going to get over this, well, you're never going to get over this. Even if they're all clear, you're never going to get over it. So, so really checking in on the belief systems as well. Sometimes when we're dealing with letting stuff go, People will resist letting it go because it could be the only connection they have left to someone. Even if that someone did um, horrible things or nasty things, there's still that connection. And without that connection, they could be all alone. They could be, um, you know, what's, they know that, but they don't know without that. So it's the fear of the unknown. It's at least that's familiar, that I don't know. So that can be playing out as well. So once we've, we understand our beliefs and we've lit it up in our nervous system, then we're, then we're doing the tapping. And while we're doing the tapping, we're focusing on our fingertips we're saying that we're repeating it. And when you're working with the videos, by repeating what I'm saying, and quite often I go a little bit faster than people like, that is breaking the state because they're wanting to say it. They're wanting to wait for me to finish to repeat it. And 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 that it's a little bit, it's like it's scattering um, the the 
event, the challenge, whatever it is, because they're trying to think of what I've said and they're, they're wanting to tap and they're focusing on their finger and I've already finished. All of that is beneficial. All of that will help you to release it and to let it go. Unless you have a belief that it won't. If you have images that pop into your head, you can tap on the image. So you, you see the image, you notice the image, you notice where the image is, and then you can tap. And you can tap and release the colors. You can tap and release, is it moving or still? You just notice the image and you let the image go and over, it will disappear. So quite often people say it goes fuzzy, other people say that it shrinks. It doesn't matter what it does, as long as it's shifting. And you can do the same with sounds. So any sounds that you heard, any words. And, and you, sometimes you can notice the direction of the sound. So it's like, where, where's that sound coming from? And it's like over there. And then you tap and you tap and it's like, okay, it's, it's, it's drifting off, whatever it, whatever it is. Okay, so the, another really great thing to do with um, when you've got childhood memories that are traumatizing is, and when I talk traumas, there's little T's and they're big T's, but sometimes what people call the little tree T's, because it, it's just a, a, a insignificant event, but you still remember it, you still remember it, you still remember it. Sometimes decisions or what it meant to you at the time can be the significant part of it. It's like you 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 were relying on people, you were relying on people, you were relying on people, and then that's it. I am doing it all on my own. No one's there for me. And then you start going out into the world and you start to uh, interact with others and you find that people kept letting you down because there's an interesting thing in life and that is... Our beliefs create our reality. We would rather be right than happy. We would so rather be right than happy. So when people show up in our life and they let us down, it's like, see, I told you, I've got to do it all. People always let you down. And there's some reassurance in the fact that the person let you down. And there's also some control. Because you're in control. You knew that was going to happen. You were prepared for it. And then when it happens, I told you. So be very careful of some of them beliefs. Because our beliefs create our reality. What we believe to be true is true in our world. If you want to make a substantial difference in your life, beliefs is where you need to work on. You need to investigate your beliefs and you need to break down how you know that's true. And quite often there will be proofs. There can be memories and there can be events, there can be emotions and you, you clean up the underlying events and emotions so that you therefore have the opportunity to have a different belief because beliefs can change all the time. You used to believe in Santa Claus. Do you still? Tooth Fairy, Easter Bunny, whatever it is. You used to believe that you were five years old. I don't think you believe that anymore. Or you could be. And then the last two beliefs, I'm in trouble. This is where working with an expert really helps. Because when you're working with someone else, they are looking at your challenge, your issue, whatever it is that you're dealing with from a totally different perception and they haven't got the emotional intensity. So they can see links from a distance that you can't find yourself. 
I even go to an expert when I'm having issues. Yes, I do tapping on my own, but if I see a pattern showing up in my life and I'm not getting the results myself, I go to an expert to get that different perception, to get the support, to dive deeper, to find the links of why it's showing up in my life. And I highly recommend you do the same. If you have a belief like, I will never get over this. I'm never going to change. Um, remember, beliefs have proofs. So you've got your proof here of um, past events, memories, and you've got uh, emotional reactions connected to the belief. It's true. <laughs> you believe that you're never going to get over it. Like I hear people say, if I lost my child, I would never give up. That's Sorry, if I lost my child, I would never get over it. And it's true to them. But then you have other people that in a very brief time, they can come to terms with whatever events happened to them, even though it was so traumatic. And they find, I don't know what to say, they, they find a way of dealing with that grief. Um, you know, there's a lot of foundations that are formed from that grief. Or they just heal it. I'll never, ever forget when I was working with someone, their, their partner had passed in a car accident and six car accident and six weeks later, they were in to deal with that grief because they did not want their two-year-old child, two or three years old, I can't quite remember now, two-year-old child to lose both parents at that point. It was an intelligent decision because she knew the grief she was feeling would be affecting her daughter. You've also got other beliefs like it doesn't work for me or what if it comes back? Oh, I don't feel it now, but it's gonna come back. Just checking the beliefs. Then, okay, so we've did our events, we looked at our beliefs. Then we've got the lessons. It is my belief that in every situation, there is a lesson. There's something we can learn from it. Once we resolve the hurt, the pain, the trauma, then what is it we can learn from it? And it is in that learning that we can gain meaning from whatever it is that we've been through. And I know myself, the once I gain the learning from some of the traumas that I'd been through, it gave a new le level of growth, a new level of understanding and compassion and forgiveness. Because once we have the learning, knowing that everyone's doing their best that they can at that given moment, you're not going to get this while you're all hurt and traumatized, but at the other side, that is when growth happens. And what I mean by growth is we, we look at the world through different eyes. We're still human. <laughs> We're still human. We still react. But even after we react, we can then go deeper. And you, uh, what is it? There go I, but for the grace of God. Or if I was wearing, walked a mile in that person's shoe, whatever they are, I can't quite, can't quite get them, but you know them, you know them. And that's where the learning and, and growth comes from. And when we have that learning, 100%, that is why I am do the work I do. I went through the suffering, the pain, the traumas, the confusion, the suicidal um, tendencies, thoughts. I went through all of that. And by healing that and growing from that, and what I mean by growing, I want everyone to experience 
the freedom that comes from setting yourself free by healing the hurts, the pains and the traumas. And then you have this compassion, this understanding, and you just want to share it. You want to share it with the world. You want to share it with others. You want to show people it's possible. You want to give hope. You were there. I did it. You can do it. And I know that to be true. And I've been in this field of helping other people. 30 years now. Now, I was still healing through that, by the way. This is another important thing. Um, I, I, I did a course that was called uh, 100% Success, Steve Wells. And the greatest gift that I got from that course that still resonates with me is I don't have to have a uni education and be graduated from uni to be teaching people that are just learning about the tapping and healing and and clearing their past. I don't have to be. I could be in grade two and teach in the preps. I may not know it all. I may not understand it all. But what I do know and what I do understand, I can share. And I've done that for so many years. The moment I learn something, I want to share it. I want to teach it to others because then I get a deeper understanding of it and a deeper learning of it. But then they have an insight. They have a new perception that they didn't have before. I want tapping in the hands of every single person in the world because it is in our hands. And that being said, if they choose not to use it, doesn't matter. They know about it. They have that option. And not only tapping, there are so many wonderful, wonderful healing modalities in the world. The havening is another one. And people use the havening. The havening to do trauma work. For me... I like it at the end of a tapping session where I'm starting to flip and I'm starting to invite what it is I'm wanting to replace, everything I just let go of. For me, that's a perfect marriage. I find the tapping a really good way to get in there and to clear out all the emotions, the physical sensations. And then we do the havening to what is it I want to be experiencing instead. I think that's enough for today. I hope this is just some really good tips for you to understand about the videos I create, the tapping and the havening and to get the best results for you. And if you're looking for a practitioner, absolutely. I work with people all over the world and I'd be happy to help you too. Take care and keep tapping.